Hello friends, in this video, we are going to discuss the unipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. Okay? Here, we are having a single phase full bridge inverter. Okay, single phase full bridge inverter. Next, it consists of the four switches S1, S2, S3, S4. Right? The voltage across the load, let us consider it as a VAB, right? Potential at this pole, it is a VAN. Potential here, it is a VBN, okay? Next, here, the reference wave is a sinusoidal wave. Carrier wave is a triangular wave, okay? Next, the frequency of the carrier wave is higher than that of the reference wave, okay? Next, let us discuss the control scheme, okay? The block diagram will be same as that of the, yes, Bipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique. Okay, so it is having a two blocks. One is the comparator, second one is the trigger pulse generator block. Okay, comparator compares the magnitudes of VR that is a reference wave and VC as well as minus VR and VC. Okay, so here control scheme we are having. Okay, so if this is the waveform for the VR sinusoidal one, VR is equal to VM into sine of omega t, then minus VR will be equal to yes, it is a VM into sine of omega t minus 180 degree okay so it is a 180 degree out of phase that will be the minus vr okay so here it is a vr here it is a minus vr vc is the carrier view right vc is the carrier view next let us consider the peak value of the carrier view is a vc peak value of the carrier view is a vc right peak value of the reference wave is a vm peak value of the reference wave is a vm let us consider it as a vm okay so it is a vm that is a peak value okay so it is a vm next now here in the control scheme yes we are using this scheme like vr is when vr is greater than vc if the magnitude of vr is greater than that of the vc then switch s1 is turned on okay when is then s1 is turned on so when vr is greater than vc s1 is turned on so when s1 is turned on right s1 is turned on okay so here the total input voltage is it is a VDC only because it is a VDC by 2 plus VDC by 2. So it is a VDC. Okay. So when S1 is turned on, what is the VAN? VAN is nothing but the potential difference between these two points, right? It is like plus here, minus here. Potential difference between these two points. This VAN is equal to VDC only. It is equal to VDC. Okay. Next, if VR is less than VC, if VR is less than VC, then S4 is turned on. When S4 is turned on, when S4 is turned on then van is nothing but yes it is like a potential difference between these two points so it is equal to minus vdc okay minus vdc by 2 minus vdc by 2 right next this n is nothing but it is like a, this is like a neutral point okay so it is a van is nothing but potential difference between these two points okay next when minus vr is greater than vc when minus vr is greater than vc then s3 will be turned on right s3 will be turned on so when s3 is turned on when s3 is turned on yes vbn yes the this uh, terminal b potential will appear at the plus ED, uh, plus vdc by 2 and neutral here we are having right so therefore vbn right it will be equal to vdc by 2 and minus vr if it is less than vc then s2 is turned on when s2 is turned on then vbn is equal to minus vdc by 2 it is equal to minus vdc by 2 okay so accordingly we are going to turn on switches s1 and s2 right and right so here next here we are having the waveforms for the pole voltages that is the van and the vbn okay the pole voltage varies between vdc by 2 and minus vdc by 2 okay v vbn is also varies between plus vdc by 2 and minus vdc by 2 okay so it is either plus vdc by 2 or minus vdc by 2 okay now so here if you check during this interval that is from this point to this point right this point to this point yes vr is less than vc if vr is less than vc then yes s4 is turned on and what is the van van is minus vdc by 2 so here we are having van is minus vdc by 2 are you getting the point okay similarly yes as vr is less than vc vr is less than vc okay so next if you check minus vr okay from this point till this point okay so minus vr minus vr is also less than that of the vc okay so minus vr less than that of the vc so vbv vbo is also equal to 
minus VDC by 2, right? So during this interval, VBN is also equal to minus VDC by 2, right? Next from this, we are going to draw the VAB, right? VAB is nothing but what? VAN minus VBN, okay? VAN minus VBN, okay? So if you check during this interval, it is a minus VDC by 2 minus of minus VDC by 2, right? So it is like a VD, minus VDC by 2 plus VDC by 2. So it will be 0 during this interval, okay? Further, yes, during this interval, right? So from this point to this point, if you check, right? Very small uh, time we are having, okay? So corresponding to this, yes, VAN is plus VDC by 2. VBN is, it is a minus VDC by 2, okay? So it is, if you check, yes, it is equal to, plus VDC by 2 minus of minus VDC by 2 is equal to VDC, right? This magnitude is equal to VDC, okay? And accordingly, yes, we have drawn the waveforms for VA and VBN for different, yes, times, okay? Or different intervals, right? According to the magnitudes of VR and VC, okay? And from this, we have drawn the waveform of VAB. So, if you check the waveform of VAB, the difference between bipolar and unipolar is, yes, Corresponding to each half cycle, right? Corresponding to the positive half cycle in the output voltage, that is a VAB, right? In the load voltage, we will be getting, yes, in the unipolar, we are getting only the positive pulses, only the positive pulses. Whereas in the negative half cycle, we are getting the negative pulses, right? Negative pulses. But in the bipolar, corresponding to the positive as well as negative half cycle, yes, we are getting positive as well as negative pulses, okay? So that is the major difference between unipolar and bipolar okay so if you check the vab waveform if you check the vab waveform yes initially vab it is a minimum just like a sinusoidal after that as if we move from here to here right it is having the pulse width is increasing right from here to here the pulse width is increasing right so therefore average value go on increasing right so here it is shown with a resultant sinusoidal wave shape okay so it will be having a shape like a sinusoidal waveform right because if you check the carrier wave frequency will be very high, okay. So these pulses will be very close, okay. So due to that, we will be getting, yes, the nearly sinusoidal waveform, okay. Again, it goes on after peak value, it goes on decreasing, right. Similarly, in the negative direction, it is increasing and after further, it will be decreasing, okay. So here, the output voltage magnitude is equal to VDC, output voltage magnitude is equal to VDC, right. Next. The expression for V0, expression for V0 is equal to, yes, it is equal to M into VDC, M into VDC into sine of omega t, right? This is for full bridge inverter. This is for full bridge inverter and V0 is equal to M into VDC by 2 into sine of omega t, okay? This is for half bridge inverter. This is for half bridge inverter. Are you getting the point? Okay. So here, yes, the M is nothing but, it is same as that of the bipolar. Okay. So the M is nothing but where M is equal to Vm by Vc. Vm by Vc is, not, is known as modulation index, right? It is known as modulation index modulation index right modulation index so now from this yes where vm is nothing but peak value of reference wave peak value of reference wave peak value of reference wave or the reference signal we can see okay and vc is nothing but peak value of peak value of yes it is a carrier wave or the carrier signal right peak value of carrier wave this is nothing but the vc this is nothing but the vc are you getting the point okay so here we need to memorize this expression v0 is equal to m vdc sin omega t this is for full bridge m vdc by 2 sin of omega t this is for half bridge okay so here we are having the expression for yes output voltage of v0 right it is a sinusoidal expression, okay, instantaneous values it is giving, okay. What is omega? Omega is nothing but the frequency, right. Omega is the 2 pi f, right. f is the output frequency of the inverter, okay. So, this is about the unipolar sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique.
in the next video we are going to discuss the numerical related to the sinusoidal pulse width modulation technique